Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to our celebration of the liturgy. Let's all say together on the cover of the bulletin, we are an emergent church practicing an ancient faith in new ways, a church of inclusivity where all are welcome. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. With the birth of Christ, God chose two very special people, Mary and Joseph, to care for their son. Mary cared for Jesus as the most special of mothers, and Joseph, his stepfather, also cared for the baby Jesus as if he were his very own. They were not a traditional family, but they were a holy family who continue to be an example in our world today. Please stand as we sing our gathering song, Part the Herald Angels.
You numbered your son together with Mary and Joseph among the homeless of the earth and counted them among the countless refugees who have fled into hiding out of fear for their lives. Shield our families from the dangers to which the world exposes them. Clothe us with compassion and kindness, with gentleness, patience, and mutual forgiveness, so that we in turn may provide others with the shelter of a home where everyone is welcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, your Son Jesus, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the word. A reading from the book of Sirach. Children, listen to me, your father. Act accordingly that you may be safe. For the Lord sets a father in honor over his children and confirms a mother's authority over her sons. Those who honor their father atone for sins. They store up riches who respect their mother. Those who honor their parents will have joy in their own children. And when they pray, they are heard. Those who respect their father will live a long life. Those who honor their mother obey the Lord. In word and deed, honor your father and mother, that all blessings may come to you. My children, be steadfast in honoring your father. Do not grieve him as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Do not revile him because you are in your prime. Kindness to a father and mother will not be forgotten. It will serve as a sin offering it will take lasting root. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
letter of Paul to the Colossians. Because you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a grievance against another, so must you forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And over all these put on love, that is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ rule over your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in the hearts of God. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be respectable towards your husbands as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children so they may not become discouraged. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. Thanks be to God. sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in, accord in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Messiah of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people of Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, 
And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself will be pierced by a sword, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. The return to Nazareth, when they fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. My dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you are born of water and the Spirit. Thanksgiving to yesterday, Christmas Day. We have been perhaps surrounded, defined, and inundated with family. We have been surrounded, perhaps, by family. Maybe that was good, maybe it was not so good. <laughs> But in any event, this time of the year, this whole concept of a holy family is loaded. It's filled with all sorts of meaning, all sorts of feeling, all sorts of stuff swirling around us. Maybe some of us, myself included, at this time of the year are reminded of close family that passed away at this time of the year and is no longer with us. Maybe some of us have memories of family that were not what we would consider holy, that were not considered holy family uh, activities and experiences. So this whole day, this whole celebration, jiggles our memories, our minds, our hearts, our spirits, with all sorts of things going on around the issue of family. And we hear the words, holy family. And maybe for some of us, that's a disconnect. Maybe for some of us, holy and family are two words that perhaps don't go together. <laughs> or perhaps those two words 
blend in our hearts in such a way that it brings us to thoughts and memories and reveries of things that once were and can never be again. This day is filled with meaning. This day is filled with spirit. This day is filled with all sorts of things. And then we hear this beautiful story from Luke about Jesus and Mary and Joseph going to the temple to do the things that they were required to do as observant and righteous Jews to present their child to the temple to the circum for circumcision for for consecration to the temple and we see there's some little issues that are going on here now let's just back up a minute just a couple nights ago we were hearing the story of their traveling to Jerusalem how there was no room in the end and how Mary gave birth in a manger, in a stable, in a barn. Mm -hmm. We heard that story, and we're touched by that. And we have shepherds, and angels, and stars, and animals that are surrounding this miraculous birth of Jesus. And it's a beautiful story. But now we come here just, you know, we have a little time warp here, right? Mm -hmm. We have a little time warp. And so now Mary and Joseph are back in the temple to do the rituals that they need to do. Now we know a couple of things from, from both of these instances, from the, the birth narrative to today's narrative. We know that Mary and Joseph, as we said in our prayer this morning, were homeless, they were unhoused, they were refugees, they were without wherewithal, they had no place to stay, no place for Mary to give birth to this baby, and now they're coming to the temple, and they're having to provide a tithe, as it were, to the temple. And the it says in today's uh, reading that the prescribed uh, tithe as two turtle doves or two small pigeons. That offering is considered the poor offering. The poor offering, because if you had the wherewithal, the offering would have been a sheep. It would have been a lamb. So we know a couple of things here about this holy family, that they were struggling that they were having some difficulties in their lives, not always well. They didn't roll into Jerusalem or Bethlehem in golden chariots. <laughs> no, we know that for a fact. We know that they were, they were displaced in more than one way. And so they come to the temple, a little destitute, a little desperate perhaps. Their family probably somewhat shaken by all of this that has gone by. They certainly aren't feeling holy at this point. How could they? What have they been through? Having a child in a crib, in a, in a hay crib, in a hay crib with animals around them and now having to come to Jerusalem and offer their offering, which is considered a poverty offering. They weren't feeling holy. They weren't feeling particularly blessed at this time. It was confusing for them. You've got angels and shepherds and stars dancing in the skies. They were confused. They were bewildered. But I'm pretty sure they weren't feeling holy. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that they were feeling a little stress. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they were feeling a little bit of dis-ease because this was all foisted on them fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. 
And so they're making their way into the temple, and lo and behold, they come across Simeon. And Simeon immediately recognizes Jesus for who he is and what he is. And he blesses not only the child, but he blesses Mary and Joseph. He gives them a blessing. And even that blessing has a paradox in it. I'm sure that Mary is wondering about this. And in one translation from Luke's Gospel, it says that when Mary took this upon her heart and she pondered it. She pondered it. That means she thought about it. That means it just didn't hit her all of a sudden, okay, I've got the Messiah here with me. Everything is cool. <laughs> No, this was all very bewildering to them. And once again, I have to think. And don't you have to think they weren't feeling real holy right then? They weren't feeling real special. What was special about riding a donkey through the, you know, all through the night, nine months pregnant, giving birth in a stable, and then coming on to Jerusalem to this to this ritual ceremony after the prescribed period of purification. They weren't feeling holy, church. They were feeling put upon. They were feeling distress. Oh, maybe that's the key. Maybe that's the key to our holy family experience. That maybe we feel put upon sometimes. Maybe we feel distressed. Maybe we feel not so special. Maybe we've got things that are weighing heavily on our hearts that we have to ponder. Just as Mary had to ponder what these messages meant. And then Anna. Anna comes upon them and once again she gives them a blessing. Gives them a blessing and lets them know that what they're about and what they're experiencing is for a greater good, something that they don't necessarily understand, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Both of these elders have been around the block a couple times. They've seen a lot of stuff. They've experienced a lot of stuff. They've been in a temple praying and observing stuff. And we know that there was a lot of stuff happening in the temple. So they've seen it all. They understand a goodly portion of what's going on and they recognize this family is special. And they tell them as much. They tell them that their family is special and that Jesus is special. And that even if they don't understand it, even if they don't feel particularly special, they are. They are special. They've heard this message and they leave and they go back to their village in Nazareth and it says, it's almost like uh, the narrative ends with, they kind of live happily ever after. That's what kind of says they went back to Nazareth and Jesus grew and was filled with wisdom and all of the other things that he would need as he became the Messiah. It kind of gives us that impression, but we know if we read between the lines and we know human life as we know human life, we know that not only did Mary ponder what had been said to her, they pondered a whole lot of stuff. They thought about a whole lot of stuff. They were trying to figure it out on the fly as it were. They didn't have the answers. They didn't have, a, they didn't have a textbook. They didn't have a scroll that they could thumb through to the back and get the answers. They didn't have that. What they did have, though, is they had community. They had community, and that is represented in the elders that came forth and explained to them what was going on and what was going to happen to them and their lives. They might not have understood it, but they had community support represented by those elders. That's what they had. 
And that is what this feast is about. When we think about family, when we think about holy families, doesn't matter where you came from or your birth family or your family that raised you or any of that stuff, you have family all around you. You have community. You have people that may not have been raised with you, may not have been born with you, may not share your same genetic makeup, but you have family. You have elders. You have people in a community somewhere that can give you the answers when you're searching for those answers. When it doesn't make any sense to you, when you can't figure out how you got where you did, where you are, when none, when none of that is making any sense, there are resources available to you in your community, as your community, as elders, as peers, as spiritual directors, as neighbors, as citizens. We have community available to us. Over the years, I've done many, 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 many baptisms of children. Many baptisms. And what I tell the parents and the godparents at every baptism that I do is what we are saying to this child when we baptize them, just as this ritual that we read about today in the temple. When we baptize <coughs> a child... What are we saying to that child? We're saying to that child, we are welcoming you into our community. We are taking you and embracing you. We are taking you into our community and we are going to be there for you. That's what parents and godparents representing the community are there for. They're there to support that child. It's a shibboleth and, and perhaps just a throwaway a term nowadays to say it takes a village, mm. but it does. Mm. And it takes more of a village now than at any point in our history as human beings because we've gotten so large, mm. we've gotten so diverse, we've gotten so discordant with one another that if we don't have a village of support if we don't have a village of caring, if we don't have a holy family of a community, we have nothing. We have absolutely nothing. And so on this Feast of the Holy Family, let us think about all of the ways in which we can be the Holy Family. Let us think about all of the ways in which we can reach out and embrace one another, reach out and embrace those who are confused, who are at a discordant point in their lives. Let us be there for them. Let us be that holy family. That's what we're being called today. That's why I think that this feast is so important because we're in the midst of all of this family stuff that we've been through for the last 30 days. Let's think about what family really is. Let's think about what a holy family is. Let's think about what community is, what support is, what we can bring to each other and to our world. We're at that point in our society and in our world where we need to be there for each other. We need to be there to support each other. We need to be there as family for each other. And you know what? Our families might not look like a, you know, a Norman Rockwell painting. <laughs> our families may look very different now. Mm -hmm. Our families are very divergent now. But nonetheless, we are family, 
And our call today is, are we going to be a discordant, dysfunctional family? Or are we going to be a holy family? I pray for all of us that we answer that call and that we are, that we will be now and forever a holy family. May God bless you all.
distress, and brokenness, may all troubled families find healing, reconciliation, and peace, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all grieving families, may those families who are mourning the loss of loved ones find comfort in the hope of being reunited with all those who have perceived them in death in the great day of the resurrection. We pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For our church, family of St. Matthew Church, may we continue to grow in unity and peace, wisdom, love in all that we say and we do, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. And now let us offer our own prayers out loud or in the silence of our hearts. For Eleanor Zydeco, who has taken a turn for the worse, we pray. Loving, Loving God, God, hear our prayer. prayer. I lift up my two oldest brothers, Tom and Rick, and that whoever cares for them can continue to do so in love and peace, and may they feel God's comfort um, during times of um, trial in poor health. For this we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. And for all these prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, accept our prayers, along with the prayers of our mother Mary and her husband Joseph. On behalf of all the families of the earth, we ask this in the name of Jesus, your son, our brother, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. with you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all God's church.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and the good of all God's church. Your word of love, Father, became incarnate through the power of the Holy Spirit. May the fire of the same Holy Spirit may incarnate the life of your Son in these gifts and in us. For he is our Savior, Jesus the Messiah, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We Amen. ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give the to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes, 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 God. Thanks and praise. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And so we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory. supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take, Take this, this, all of you, and drink from it. This, this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me.
Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with all church leaders, the Bishop of Rome, and Peter our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, <coughs> with Sarah, the teacher of wisdom, with Paul, the apostle, Luke, the evangelist, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ.
brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this supper. Lord, Lord I will receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. sisters, we here at St. Matthew's have long realized and recognized that this is not our table. This is the table of the Lord. So all are welcome to participate in the Eucharistic feast. All we ask is that you allow our ushers to disinfect your hands when you come up. We ask that you intink or dip the host into the wine and then consume it immediately. Thank you.
Let us pray. Loving God, may the Eucharist we have shared increase our love for you and for one another as we rejoice in the baptism of Jesus the Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And also, also with you. you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, go ahead and take a quick seat while we do our announcements. Thank you. So you know we have several. <laughs> First, I would just like to, since we're, especially since we're not going to see each other again until next year, <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for your continued generosity towards the ministry here at St. Matthew's so that we can continue to bring authentic Catholic worship to everyone regardless of their marital status, their race, their creed, their um, sexual gender or preference. Please continue to give generously in 2022 so that St. Matthew's can continue to be a light unto the world out there. So thank you all, and thank you all for coming to church today. Uh, I'll just go through a couple of event uh, calendar items. Uh, the Bible study will resume again um, February 22nd. and sorry. The 2nd. Oh, sorry. February 2nd, not the 22nd. So it's February 2nd. Um, and then Sunshine Club will start again January 9th. Um, and then Deacon Tony and I have a little something that we're going to be starting, which is going to be called Breakfast with Believers. And we are going to ch uh, choose a Saturday, which is going to be Saturday, January 22nd, where we will come and have breakfast and talk about a uh, Bible subject, um, which will be... Uh, I guess something we'll be thinking about over the next few weeks. Um, but uh, be looking on your calendar for um, that event and um, and any other items. Either visit our website or our bulletin uh, for any other announcements. I'd also like to thank our beautiful choir. <laughs> and I believe Mariah is going to do a drawing. This is our final one, correct? Good morning, everyone. Good so, morning. so today is our final drawing for our one hundred dollars, um, and so me, 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 pick me, pick me. Yeah, pick me. Drum roll, please. destination in heaven. This holy mass has ended. Thanks be to God. God.
身后。